now I want to try and teach you a little bit about quantum in a few minutes. And I was looking around and trying to find the best picture that I could think of that explained what the popular press described quantum. And everywhere I look, <laughs> everywhere I look, it says there's something like a live and a dead cat. And this picture looks like the best example of a cat that is both dead and alive at the same time. <laughs> and there's lots of magic around it. And I think this is because we really try to over-analogize, and we try to make an analogy for what quantum is, and we don't experience quantum effects. So rather than make an analogy, I would rather try and be very precise of what is different, and then try and show through some examples. So quantum computing is very much like classical computing. You have to initialize your system, you have to go do some operations, we call them gates, and then you have to extract information. We call this measurement. But there's two things that are very different. And the first is this concept that something that is in a definite state can still behave randomly. OK? That sounds a bit strange, but I'll try and show later. The second is that two things that are too far apart, and they're individually random, so they have no information in them, their correlation, when you bring them together, can have more information. So the whole is much harder, bigger than the parts. So let's try and demonstrate the first one. The only way I know how, by coming up with a simple coin flip experiment and then doing it through QuizKit. So first, we're going to import all the things that are needed. So here's a simple circuit. This circuit starts by declaring a quantum register, a classical register of size 1. And then it uh, declares a quantum circuit. And then it applies this operation, which I'm just going to call the coin flip for a moment. Then it measures. And then we look at the results. So what's happening here is first we're initializing it in 0. And this coin flip is making a mixture of both 0 and 1. So if I was to do this 1,000 times, you get about 50-50 that it's in either of them. So if I was to do this twice, how many people in riser hands would expect 50-50? Obviously, no one, so everyone's a quantum expert, which is really good. <laughs> Oops. So if you do this twice, what happens is it's 100% always in the zero state. So this operation isn't random. So this superposition of 0 and 1 became all zero again. And this is a negative sign. So in quantum, you have this ability that future operations can cancel the previous ones through adding them together to give a negative. Or you can think of this as a different way. You can think of this final part as measuring it in a different basis. And you're asking the question, is the top of the circuit in 0 plus 1 or 0 minus 1? And you find the answer says it's in 0, 1. And then you can do things like introduce a phase flip, which simply is another operator, and that flips it in the face. And now I've made the superposition of 0 minus 1, and I measure it, and I find that it's perfectly deterministic. So depending on how we look at it, even though it's in a definite state, sometimes it's random, sometimes it's not. 